Hello, and welcome to All Things Apostolic. Today we're going to discuss leadership development within the Apostolic Pentecostal Movement, and we're going to explore the critical role of leadership in the growth and health of congregations. Hello and welcome to All Things Apostolic. My name is Dr. Casey Cease. When we talk about leadership, we have to understand that leadership is the backbone of any thriving community, especially the church. Because in the church, leaders are not just administrators, but they're spiritual shepherds. Leaders in the church aren't just focusing on the physical needs, but they also have to be attuned to the spiritual needs. But despite the pivotal role of leadership, many organizations, whether they're secular or churches, find themselves in a leadership gap with a scarcity of prepared and equipped leaders. This gap poses a threat to the church, not only to its growth, but also in terms of its mission and ability to reach and serve the community effectively. And so when we talk about leadership, we understand the necessity of leadership development. But leadership development requires a systematic approach. And the systematic approach needs to include identifying, nurturing, and empowering the next generation of leaders. You see, through my own experience as a youth pastor, as an assistant pastor in York, Pennsylvania, and pastoring a church in Sellins Grove, Pennsylvania, myself, and now um, helping with the leadership development at the Rock Church of Elk Grove, I've witnessed firsthand the transformative impact of intentional leadership development on church growth and reaching the community. Gary McIntosh argues that one of the ways in which you can tell the size of a church is by looking at the amount of people that are actually in leadership. McIntosh argues that for every leader you have, typically you'll see 10 people within the congregation. And so if you have 10 leaders, then your church probably averages 100 in attendance. And so the need for developing leaders is necessitated if we're going to continue to see growth within our congregation. Again, I want to reiterate that the apostolic church is not alone in facing this leadership development void. This is a widespread issue affecting many sectors. However, the implications for our church is unique because unlike other organizations, the church is dealing with matters of ultimate concern. They're dealing with matters that deal with uh, life and death in terms of eternity, not just here on earth. And so to address this void, one of the best ways we can address the void of having enough leaders is by looking within our own congregations and tapping into the vast potential of our members that they may rise up and become the leaders that God has called them to become. When we look at strategies for leadership cultivation within the local assembly, um, it's a multifaceted approach. It includes a lot of things, but some of the core things that we need to include in leadership development are uh, biblical and theological training that ensures that our leaders are well-versed in scripture and the theological underpinnings of our faith. In addition to biblical and theological training, we need to include practical ministry skills that will equip leaders with the skills needed for effective ministry, whether it's preaching, whether it's teaching a Sunday school class, whether it is running the soundboard or the screens, all of these things, there's practical skills that can be imparted and taught through ministry development. But in addition to these skills, we need to have a process of mentorship in place that prepares emerging leaders with experienced mentors that can offer guidance and support along the way. And in addition to the individual approach of looking at um what we can do with individuals, we also need to foster a culture of leadership within the church. We need to create an environment that values and prioritizes leadership development at every level of the local assembly. Because again, intentional leadership has a profound impact on the church. It not only addresses the immediate need for leaders, but it also ensures the long-term vitality and growth of the church. 
By investing in development of our members, we prepare our church to meet the challenges of the future. And we meet those challenges, ground it in faith, and guide it by capable and spiritually mature leaders. As we delve further into the intricacies of leadership development within an apostolic context, it becomes evident that the journey towards cultivating effective leaders is truly multifaceted because the development is not only about transferring knowledge or skills, but about shaping the very character and spirit of those who are called. And so the church today stands at a crucial juncture, facing challenges from within and without. We face the challenge of the secular world's pressures, the evolving dynamics of community and worship, and the profound need for spiritual guidance that underscores the urgent demand for leaders who are not only adept in administration and ministry, but they also have a deep well of spiritual wisdom and strength. And so the gap in leadership development is more than operational. It's more than an operational shortfall because it reflects a deeper need for a renewed understanding of what leadership means in the eyes of God. And to address this gap effectively, we have to turn to the Bible as our ultimate guide for faith and practice. While we'll dig into this a little bit deeper in other episodes, Scripture is replete with examples of leadership, from Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt to Paul's pastoral letters guiding the early church. These accounts provide not only models for leadership, but they also provide principles that can guide our development efforts today. Leadership in the biblical sense encompasses vision, courage, humility, and a deep reliance on God's guidance and strength. And so while spiritual formation lays the groundwork for effective leadership, practical skills in communication, conflict resolution, strategic planning, um, how to reach the community, all of these are vital. These skills enable leaders to navigate the challenges of ministry in the 21st century, making the gospel accessible to a world in need of hope. And at the heart, when we talk about leadership development strategies and, and creating a process for developing leaders, at the heart of any effective leadership development program is mentorship. Mentorship bridges the gap between theoretical knowledge and practical application because it provides emerging leaders with the guidance, support, and encouragement they need to grow in their roles. Through mentorship, experienced leaders can impart wisdom gained through many years of ministry, helping to shape and form the next generation of leaderships in a way that no book or seminar can do alone. And so we need to cultivate effective leadership within our congregation, which necessitates a cultural shift within most churches. This shift involves valuing leadership development as a vital aspect of the church's mission by investing time, resources, and prayer into growing leaders, and also creating an environment where emerging leaders feel empowered, they feel supported, that way they can step into their calling. But I do want to ensure that we understand that leadership development is not the sole responsibility of pastors or ministry. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that the primary purpose for the fivefold ministry is to equip others to do the work of ministry. And so when we look at leadership development, it is something that every leader within the church, every department head, every person working in a ministry needs to recognize and affirm the gifts and callings that they see within the midst of their congregation because church members can play a crucial role in nurturing potential leaders by providing them with opportunities to serve and offering feedback and encouragement along the way. And so as we look to the future, the need for intentional leadership development programs in the apostolic church has never been greater. 
by committing to this critical aspect of our mission, we can ensure that our churches continue to be led by men and women who are fully equipped to guide their congregation with wisdom, integrity, and a deep love for God and his people. In closing, the path to effective leadership development in apostolic churches is both challenging and it's rewarding. It requires a commitment to biblical principles, a dedication to practical skill building, and a culture that supports and values the growth of emerging leaders. So as we embark on this journey together, let's do so with confidence that God will guide us and sustain us, growing leaders who are capable, committed, and Christ-like in their service. Thank you for joining me on this episode of All Things Apostolic as we have discussed leadership development. Next week, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the concept of leadership development. Over the next couple episodes on Wednesdays, we'll be looking at biblical examples. We'll provide some practical um, explanations. And we're also going to look at some frameworks that individuals, churches, and other organizations are already using to grow their leaders and competencies and to grow their leadership base. So tune in next time. Have a great day.